This is the Fujifilm X-X1. This camera have all the Fujifilm fans like go crazy about Oh my god, in police stabilization! But for somebody else, maybe it's just an X-T2 with in police stabilization What's so good about it? But I can tell you that more to it Fujifilm is known for making some of the most loved steel cameras They start to dip their toes into the 4K water with X-T2 Now comes the X-H1 are they finally going head first into the game? Haha, <laughs> look at that! There is a... What's it called? Dolly, dolly light? Dolly lamp? That light in front tells you this camera is actually rolling. Oh, I haven't seen any other camera put this feature. Of course, the in-body stabilization works with the OIS on the lens. Well, it's probably not as stable as the GH5 because the GH5 is just quite easily stable, especially if you turn on the digital stabilization. This one don't have any digital stabilization, just like my Sony. Actually, I have used this to shot my uh, Hong Kong travel photography episode in Tim Cha Choi yesterday. Shot the whole video with this. My two days of shooting with this XX1, I'm mostly happy with the stabilization. As I mentioned before, I don't really like the GH5 stabilization. It got a little bit of distort as at the, at the corner sometimes, even with just optical stabilization. In some situations, I do find a tiny bit of distortion. Still, it's rare and not that noticeable. It's just a shame when this comes from a light to dark area. When I use auto exposure, when it changes exposure automatically, it just changes in steps. It's kind of like a clicky step of changing. Unlike my Sony camera, when it changes exposure, it changes smoothly. This is one thing that bothered me a lot since the X-T2. It's a shame it still do that. Sometimes when I zoom, it makes this kind of weird flicker. Another thing disappointing is the battery life. Uh, on paper, the battery life doesn't look good already. And in reality, as I mentioned, I have shot with this yesterday. And I feel like the battery life is almost like my Sony A7 camera, which means it's bad. <laughs> I'm not sure how exactly it compared to my Sony camera, but it feels really similar. Not good. Although this is not just an X-T2 with in-body stabilization, there are nice little details making this so great to shoot with. Shooting 4K at 200 megabit per second, now it should f lock without the grip because X-T2, if you want to shoot f lock you have to use the grip. And it got a new Eternal Film Simulation. I like this new Eternal Film Simulation. It's kind of like those cine like profile from other cameras. This gives you flat picture for quick color correction when lock file is just too much hassle. But if you want f lock you can. Although it's still 8-bit file, Bending could occur pretty often. It got something called a movie silent control. Basically, you don't have to use the dials on top, you use the touchscreen at the back to control everything when shooting movie. But since this is a touch based control, I would love to see a bigger tap area. But same problem with Sony camera with the default setting is that when you change aperture, I want to see the histogram when I change exposure. And this is back linear focus by wire setting. Let me show you. For Sony cameras, you have to get their G Mask lens with their manual focusing actually linear. But until now, I'm not even know that it is possible with just a software with a setting inside the manual. Now you can do really accurate focus working manually because it's finally linear. So of course you can take photos with this, this is the camera, right? The thing is, it's really great to switch between video mode and still mode as well because it got separate settings for still and video. There are a lot of settings that blanket movie. This tells you that when you're setting this up, it only affects when it's in movie mode. For example, this kind of film simulation, now you're using Eterna for blanket movie. If you now change it to still photo mode and then you come back into here, 
you can see the film simulation is using something else. What's more, for example, when you are in movie mode, there are lots of settings that's just for still photo, which is basically just grey it out so that you don't get confused. This is what I call user friendly. Now something interesting is that if you are shooting pale system like me, if you have to maintain 180 degrees shutter angle, there's no 1 over 50 here. So what do I do? Do I always go to 60 and then change it with the dial? You can do that. But what I usually do is that, for example, I was shooting photos. Uh, when I want to shoot video, I will change to video mode from here. And then I just turn it to T. Stand for time, I guess. When you change it to T, you can change the shutter speed with the dial. So last time I have set it to 50. Change it to T, it goes to 50 automatically. And yes, you can still have this 48, 1 over 48 for shooting 24 frames per second. And as you know, Fujifilm cameras shoot really great photos, really nice color. Now the shutter is really quiet. As they claim, this is a newly designed mechanical shutter. You can take 14 FPS with electronic shutter, but with mechanical shutter, 8 FPS with the grip. With the grip, 11 FPS! Continuous autofocus mostly great. A few shots here and there get out of focus. After all, this is not a spot-oriented camera, so I'm happy with this performance. If you use electronic shutter, it can go up to 14 FPS and without blackout, without the grip as well. Now, this is simply amazing. This feels like a Sony. The Fujifilm X-H1 feels like a good balance between still and video. It's great for Fuji shooter who wants in-body stabilization and for those who want to shoot some videos too. There are loads of little features specially for video shooting and I love how easy it is to switch between still and video with separate settings. It is not yet a video-oriented camera like the GH5 or the A7S series but this is probably one of the cameras with the best balance between photos and video.